This is Echo 3, and let's discuss a few of the earliest British jet aircraft. This video will highlight the United Kingdom's first three fighter jets, the Gloucester Pioneer, the Gloucester Meteor, and the de Havilland Vampire, each of these planes being influential and iconic in their own right. The first British jet-engined aircraft was the Gloucester E-2839. It is also known as the Gloucester Pioneer, the Gloucester G-40, or the Gloucester Whittle due to its use of a Whittle engine. The United Kingdom Air Ministry wanted an aircraft to be used as a testbed for Frank Whittle's newly designed jet engines. So, the Gloucester Aircraft Company collaborated with Whittle's company, Power Jets Limited, in order to construct the nation's first jet-powered aircraft. By September of 39, the Air Ministry released its specifications for the plane. Thus, by complying with the 28th experimental specifications in the year 1939, the aircraft received the designation 2839. Not surprisingly, since Germany's invasion of Poland on the 1st of September 1939, the requirements for the aircraft included a pair of machine guns. However, these were never installed. But the start of the Second World War and the battle for France spurred the United Kingdom's interest and investment in jet fighters. By the 15th of May, 1941, test pilot Philip Edward Gerald Sayer took the plane out for its first flight with the jet engine. At an altitude of 7,620 meters, he reached a maximum speed of 156.5 meters per second. The second prototype flew in April of 43 and reached 208 meters per second. It would later crash in July due to the wrong kind of grease being used on the ailerons. But by 44, the first prototype was eventually able to reach 225.7 meters per second, flying at 9,140 meters altitude with the W2700 engine. By this time, though, more advanced turbojets were available. The research on the first British jet aircraft provided valuable data. This enabled Gloucester to produce a second jet, the Gloucester Meteor. This would be the Allies' only jet fighter to see combat during the war. The mods used to make these planes in this video include Airplane Plus, Mark I stock-like open cockpit, tweak scale, and the Making History DLC. I only used the DLC to help make the de Havilland Vampire. All of these aircraft will be available on Kerbal X if you want to download them and try them out for yourself. Gloucester's first jet, the E-2839, will never actually equip with weapons was, at one point, expected to be a fighter. However, their second, the Meteor, was from the start intended to be a jet fighter and would become the Allies' only jet used in combat. As Gloucester worked closely with power jets on their first jet plane, the chief designer, George Carter, drew up plans for a twin-jet engine fighter plane in August of 1940. He realized that using only one of Whittle's early jets would not produce enough thrust, so he decided a pair of engines would work better. This piqued the interest of Max Aitken, the Ministry of Aircraft Production and personal friend of Winston Churchill. In January of 1941, he instructed Gloucester to prioritize this over a night fighter they had been working on. The 7th of February, 1941, the company received an order for 12 prototypes. This would later be changed to just eight. And by the 21st of June, the UK was considering ordering up to 300 of these fighter jets. Initially, they are going to name the aircraft the Thunderbolt, but the United States Army Air Force had recently released their P-47 Thunderbolt, so the jet's name was changed to the Meteor in order to avoid confusion. On the 12th of January, 1944, the first test flight of a Meteor fighter jet took place. It would be armed with four 20mm cannons, and by July, the fighter was deemed flight-ready for the military. Number 616 Squadron of the RAF was the first to get the new plane. The first production model had some issues, and the second model was cancelled. The third model, the F-3, fixed many of the major shortcomings. A major difference between the F-1 and F-3 variants is the longer engine nacelles. This resulted in reduced drag and higher top-end speeds. During the war, the first missions for the new jet were to shoot down German V-1 flying bombs. On the 4th of August, 1944, pilots were able to shoot down two of them. The RAF feared the plane getting into German hands, so none of the early missions were flown over mainland Europe. Besides shooting down V-1s, the 616 also helped American pilots train to deal with German jets. Later, the 616 was issued the F-3 variant. The RAF determined that these could be flown over Europe, so in January 45, several meteors would be based in Belgium. 
These planes were used for airfield defense, and as such, the pilots were forbidden from flying over German-occupied territory. The pilots did hope that the Germans would send some ME-262s their way, but that never occurred. By March, some meteors were being used for armed reconnaissance and strafing. The first jet versus jet air combat wouldn't occur until the Korean War. After the war, newer versions of the meteor were produced. It would serve in the RAF well into the 1950s. But improvements in surface-to-air missiles quickly made the jet obsolete. Today, many of the planes live on in museums, but five are still considered flightworthy. Three of those are in the United Kingdom, one is in Australia, and one is in the U.S. in Chino, California. The F-2 upgrade to the Meteor was going to use engines made by de Havilland, but it was not ready until July 1945. By that point, the F-3 variant was already under construction, and de Havilland had started focusing on their own jet fighter, the Vampire. After the Meteor, the Vampire was the next fighter jet to be operated by the Royal Air Force, and, like the United Kingdom's first jet, it would be powered by a single jet engine. Development of this distinct aircraft began in 1941. It used a Halford H-1 turbojet. This jet was powerful enough that only one would be needed. The intakes would be integrated into the roots of the wings. The twin booms enabled the jet pipe to be kept short, while the tail of the aircraft was kept out of the way of the jet exhaust. By April 1942, the Ministry of Aircraft Production instructed de Havilland to proceed with two prototypes. Like their successful Mosquito multi-role combat aircraft, the Vampire, nicknamed the Spider Crab at the time, would be making use of molded plywood. The aft section would use more aluminum, or aluminium as the designers would say. The first prototype flew in September 43. This was just six months after the Meteor's first test flight. After further testing and refinement, the first production batch was issued on the 13th of May 1944 but the first production Vampire would not fly until April 45. After the war, the plane received many improvements and upgrades. It was eventually able to reach speeds up to 882 kilometers an hour, that's 245 meters per second. One flew up to the then world record 18,119 meters and was the first true jet to take off and land from an aircraft carrier. It would also be the first jet to fly across the Atlantic. It could be armed with four 20mm cannons carrying a total of 600 rounds of ammunition. In addition, it could be armed with eight rockets or 450 kilograms of bombs. It seems that it was a relatively simple aircraft to fly. The biggest change for pilots coming from piston aircraft was the slower responsiveness of the throttle. Overall, it could be considered to have excellent maneuverability, a good thrust to weight ratio, and could fairly easily be recovered from a stall. Dozens of countries would go on to operate the aircraft, with around 3,300 being produced. Vampires would be used for the Royal Canadian Air Force's The Blue Devils, their aerobatic team. In Australia, some trainer variants remained in service with their Navy until 1971. And in Rhodesia, they were still operating some of the jets until the early 1980s. Today, it seems that as many as 10 may still be airworthy. Although only Vampire Air Shows in the United States is the only one that I know of for sure to be flying at air shows. They are scheduled for 13 different air shows this year throughout the United States. This is Echo 3, and thanks for joining me to discuss the first British jet fighters. I will see you next time.